This bait that I'm about to show you is responsible for more tournament wins and more money than any other bait or fishing lure out there over this last year. From local tournaments all the way through professional series tournaments, this bait and lure has been taking the fishing world by storm. And surprisingly, it's not that expensive, it's not that complicated, it's not a custom bait or anything like that, and it's very simple to throw. And that bait is the hover rig. Now the hover rig has many different names. You could call this, you know, just a swim bait with a jig head. It's called a hover rig. I've heard it called juggling, the hover juggle. There's a number of different names, but ultimately it doesn't matter what you call it. It's simply a minnow style bait that you are going to cast out and utilize forward facing sonar to keep above the fish, hence why they call it the hover rig, because you want this bait above the fish that you are targeting. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all of my favorite heads, my different uh, favorite presentations, my favorite minnow style trailers that go on that. I'm gonna give you guys a technique to utilize. If you guys stick around to the end to go ahead and make sure that you maximize the full potential of the hover rig. We're gonna go into my favorite rod and reel combo setup with line, what size line you need. We're gonna go into all the details in this video about the hover rig. Now, before we get started, again, let me just briefly give you guys a backstory, or not a backstory, I should say, but a foundation of what a hover rig is. We already kind of mentioned it, but it is simply a minnow style bait that has weight either on the hook or within the bait that allows you to cast this bait out and utilizing forward facing sonar, keep that bait right above the fish that you are targeting. As I mentioned, here's a jig head. So it's just a jig head minnow. You can call it you know, a jig head for a swim bait. Doesn't really matter. There's tons of different, those different options out there. Here's a, another example of again, just a jig head. You can utilize a hook with the weight already built or poured into the hook so that when you rig it up on your minnow style bait, it's hidden completely inside the bait. It's just something a little bit different. Instead of having the weight in the front of the head, you have the weight just like this one right here where it's in the body of the bait. It gives a little bit different action. It allows the bait to be pulled more from the middle rather than from the front of the head. So again, just a little bit different uh, actions or presentations. But for the most part, again, same thing. It's a minnow style bait that you're going to cast out and keep above the fish's head. So those are two different options. Another option you could do is almost like a Ned head, just like that. And again, it's a smaller weight. These are one eighth ounce and it's more like a jig head, I would say, but just a little bit, you know, finessier and smaller of a presentation. Don't make it too complicated. It's just a little bit of weight combined with a minnow style trailer. So that's what a hover rig is. My favorite weights for the hover rig are anywhere from a 16th, so super, super lightweight, all the way up to about quarter max. If even if I'm fishing super deep water, guys, there's not many times that I go over a quarter of an ounce. And most of the time, I like somewhere around, you know, three sixteenths, I would say. So you want to use a very lightweight because again, as the name of the technique implies, you want to keep that bait above the fish. And that's very important because most predator fish, including bass, go ahead and feed up in the water column. So what you are going to do is again, utilize your forward facing sonar, pick out your target, cast to the fish, and then let it sink to the fish. And when he sees it, you want to keep the bait above the fish's head. That's why you want to utilize a lighter weight. So hopefully I haven't, uh, I've drilled that point home enough for y'all. So those are my favorites. Again, for me, my favorite is just a jig head. I like quarter ounce or three sixteenth. That's my favorite. Now for trailers, don't make this too complicated. It doesn't need to be very complicated at all. You can use anywhere from a two to four inch minnow style trailer. Those are my favorites. I'm sure you could go larger and I'm sure you could go smaller in terms of the bait fish size. But for the most part, 
stick right to the middle of that. Most of the time, I'm going right around three inches, so two to four inches there. This is a Yamamoto scope shad. Don't get too hung up, guys, on brand. I'm going to give you guys a bunch of them here. Don't get hung up on the brand. Pick your favorite brand that is, you know, a fluke-ish style trailer, you know, something without a paddle tail, I would say, because you're not really swimming it. You're just kind of hovering it. And uh, you want that tail just like this. I mean, I'm holding it pretty still, and you can see it's just bouncing back there. It does the same thing under the water. So your favorite uh, fluke style trailer there. Again, this is a Yamamoto Scope Shad. What else do I have here? I have the Six Sense Juggle Minnow. That was another one I had tied up, showed there. It's a little bit bigger of a presentation. It's a four inch bait, minnow style. Go with your natural shad colors. I personally always go natural in color. Go something that, you know, matches the hatch, matches a shad, matches a herring, you know, maybe a white belly, blue back, white belly, green back. Pick your favorite. Again, it's not rocket science here. Uh, just get it in front of the fish and they'll probably eat it if they're going to eat it. He, again, I already mentioned the Yamamoto Scope Shad right there. Again, just whites and greens, whites and blues. Uh, we have the Fluke, just a, a classic Fluke, another one of my favorites. This was in pearl white. I use these on cloudy days, but doesn't seem to matter there. Again, just another different option. And then lastly, you can also use a Kitek. And if you use a Kitek, I mentioned you don't really want a paddle tail style swim bait for this because that's more for, you know, casting and reeling where that, that bait is swimming through the water. But what you can do with these Kiteks is if you end up utilizing it for hover rigging, you can actually trim the tail a little bit or cut that paddle tail off right where it meets the, uh, the bait itself. And that will give you a nice action without, you know, the kicking. And it's going to allow that bait, even when it's, you know, paused in the water and not swimming, to have a little tail kick. So that's another option there. Again, don't make it too complicated. Pick your favorite trailer and thread it on. Again, I can show you guys right here. Thread it on the hook so that, it, again, it looks like a swim bait. A swim bait without the paddle tail. That's really, really what it is. Uh, again, Demiki rig. Call it whatever you want. Now let's jump into my favorite rod and reel setup. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you guys know that I love the G Loomis NRX series. That's me personally. Ultimately, this is a finesse presentation. So as I mentioned, you're throwing a bait that's anywhere from an eighth of an ounce to a quarter ounce. So very, very light. And same way you want light line, light tackle. So I would recommend, again, pick your favorite brand but I would recommend a medium at the heaviest to a medium light powered rod and a spinning. It's going to be a spinning rod again, because it's a very finesse lightweight presentation. So pick your favorite brand. You want ultimate sensitivity to know when that fish, you know, slurps the bait. But as I mentioned, this is a G Loomis NRX. This is an 852. It works pretty well. I'll be honest, I love this rod. You guys know that. I've talked about it a bunch. You can use it for a number of different applications. But if anything, I might even go a power lighter than this, to be honest with you guys, too, if I had a dedicated hover rig rod. Because, you again, you just want something ultra light for these fish. So this is, a again, an 852. It's a 7.1 medium power uh, G Loomis NRX plus spinning reel. Again, as I mentioned before, you want light, super light braid. Uh, this is 2,500 Vanford, same as usual, 10 pound braid to anywhere from a, I would say five to 10 pound liter at the heaviest. So again, this is a finesse technique, a finesse presentation. That bait is super light and same way you want to follow that with your leader line size. So for me, I prefer anywhere from six to eight pound leader. Again, six, seven, or eight. A bunch of different companies, you know, make leader at that small, you know, by certain pounds. But I would go with six or seven pound to start off with, depending on how much cover you have. If you're in open water like me and, you know, fish highland reservoirs, you don't really need to worry about those fish swimming into stumps or trees or anything. So I go six pound. Just go as light and as finesse as possible. 
If you're around stumps and stuff, go 10 pound or eight or 10. But that's about the max you want because you want this bait to have as most action in the water as possible when you're reeling it in. So 10 pound braid, six to 10 pound leader. And then ultimately, like I said, pick your poison on uh, whether you wanna go jig head or hidden weight. There's a number of different options out there. Just set up a minnow style bait that's super light and finesse presentation. So that's my hover rig setup right there. Works perfectly for me. And again, just keep it finesse, pick your favorite there and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Now, let's jump into how to present this bait. That's one of the most common questions and ideas that I've kind of talked to people about and people always ask, you know, how do you present the bait? How do you present a hover rig? And ultimately, that's just the biggest kind of mystery is that presentation of this finesse bait. So what you are going to do, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is this is a forward-facing sonar technique. It is to specific fish. It's to an exact target. And what you are going to do when you scan around with your forward-facing sonar, when you locate a fish, what you are going to do is cast out your hover rig. Again, you're gonna to have to be pretty close because it's pretty light. So I would say anywhere from 80 feet and in is kind of your target range, but you want to hit that fish as close as possible so that it sees it. So let's pretend, let's, let's do an example here. Let's pretend you've spotted a fish, it's 60 feet away, you're going to cast that fish. Let's pretend you make a perfect cast, it goes exactly 60 feet, and let's say the fish is 10 feet below the surface. So once you cast out to 60 feet, you're gonna watch on your forward facing sonar as this hover rig slowly sinks down to the fish. And it's gonna be slow guys. Again, I mentioned it's light. This is a pretty big head here. But uh, again, I normally use anywhere from 3 16 to a quarter. This is just a Damiki I had from this winter. But again, same concept. So this bait is going to sink down above the fish's head. Let's pretend my hand is the fish. So you've casted it out. It's as soon as that fish sees it, it's gonna start coming to the bait. That's when you wanna start working it. And all you're gonna do is keep your rod tip up because again, you want to keep that bait above the fish's head. Most predator fish feed up. That fish sees it, he's going to swim over to it. What you're gonna do is start re keep your rod up and start reeling very slowly and hopping your rod or shaking your rod. And what that's going to do is this bait isn't going to move very much again, because you're not reeling very fast. You're just kind of almost reeling in the tension from you hopping the rod. And that bait's going to be jumping around like this or juggling around again, hence the name juggling or hover juggle. So this bait now is slowly moving like this and it's jiggling through the water, just very finesse, very light application here. And that fish is going to come up. And most of the time, guys, if that fish is going to eat it, he's going to come up and I mean immediately your blobs are going to, going to merge. So this is going to be a blob on your forward facing. This is going to be a blob from the fish on your forward facing. The blobs are going to meet and all of a sudden it's just going to get heavy. And you're just going to you know, reel down, lean into the fish again because you're using light line, light tackle, let the rod do all the work and just set into it. So again, cast it out, fish is down here, let it sink until the fish sees it and you'll see the fish start moving towards it. Then start slowly reeling and keep your rod tip up and start jiggling the rod. And that bait's gonna be moving through the water like this very slowly. Sometimes they don't eat it initially and they're gonna follow it. Just keep doing your same thing. Keep your rod tip up, shake the rod a little bit as you slowly reel. It's not much guys, it's not much at all. It's very, very finesse. That's really all there is to it. As I mentioned, it's not a super complicated technique at all. The most complicated piece of this component is getting good or getting proficient with your forward facing sonar. It takes a lot of work on your foot, especially if it's windy, to make sure that you keep that cone on your lure and on the fish to see what's going on because that's the biggest thing. If you are struggling to keep your the forward facing sonar locked in on the fish or the target. Don't worry about that guys. It's not a big deal. Use it to find the fish. And then what you can do, drop this lure beside the boat and count down, you know, how many seconds it takes to fall a foot or a couple feet. Then 
what you can do is, again, if you're, you see with your forward-facing sonar, once you find your target, go ahead and cast it out to where you think that fish will be, count it down based on how fast that sink rate is, and then again, just start working it like you would without seeing it on forward-facing sonar. Again, if you are struggling to maintain uh, target or locked on that target. So that's my advice for you guys. Again, it is a forward-facing technique. You guys have seen it from the professional series and all the way down through the local tournaments across the country. It works everywhere. It works on every body of lake. Every fish, that, at least that I know of, every bass, I should say, eats some sort of bait fish. So it will work everywhere. It works up north for smallmouth. I've done it. It works in the southeast for spotted bass and largemouth. I've done it. It works out west for giant largemouth. I've done it. So it works across the board. When is the best time to throw it? Honestly, I would say year round. Again, it is a bait fish imitator, flat out. You guys have heard me say it a hundred times, but anywhere will they eat a bait fish and that's year round. However, this bait really shines for me. I would say anywhere from the fall through the springtime, specifically in the winter. That's kind of my favorite time to throw it. But you can absolutely throw this in the summertime as well to individual fish or a group of fish. You see them. They will still eat it. So that's what the hover rig is. Hopefully you guys have learned something in this video and learned that you don't need to be scared of it. You don't learn that it's not a very, you know, it's not a crazy technique. It's not an expensive technique by any means, especially with the way all these baits and lures are going up and up in price. This is a fairly cheap lure, guys. I mean, maybe a couple bucks at the most of, uh, for, for one of these. So super cheap. Anybody can do it and go out and practice. That's the only way you're going to get better. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead, drop a like down below. Comment down below on what your favorite style of trailer for the hover rig is. I'd be curious to know. Maybe like a brand and a color would be pretty neat. With all that said, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, try to do something that makes you better today. Try something, try to learn something new, try something new, and uh, continue to get better every day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to y'all soon.